The killing of the soldier was about 9.50. The last shot fired in Parliament uh, was about 10 o'clock. The time we see here is 11.40, so that's one hour 40 minutes since a bullet's been fired anywhere in the city. However, the city is in lockdown mode. Uh, everyone's told to stay inside, uh, keep going on with your normal daily work. Uh, but how come, how come we see these people, uh, you know, they've got their bags, they've got their jackets, they're going home. They're going home after two hours of work. They're walking down the street where no one else is allowed to walk, risking their lives, supposedly because there's a terror suspect around. They're being let out and going home. Bullshit. That doesn't happen. There's no way no people will be letting, companies will be letting people go home two hours after they've started work. Sorry, you've got six more hours to work. Um, it just like The city's in lockdown. You stay inside. You stay inside, and especially when you've got the cops outside protecting you. This is just a post office. Why are these people going home? No way known. These are just all bullshit. It's a drill. Have a look at them. Everyone's going home. Some were actually uh, were escorted to a... Well, oh, this guy's got a bike. Some were escorted to a special police van, as we saw in the previous video. But maybe, maybe these people are being used for a special reason. Could it be that, hang on, look at these cops. Who are these people on the side of this? Who are these people? Could that be them? They needed, they needed spectators, a cheer squad. Can you believe that? The city's in lockdown mode. These idiots running around with rifles. No bullets being fired anywhere. This guy is filming this with his camera. People are just standing there while the cops are shit frightened. They're running around with rifles. These guys aren't even sweating at all. Why are they there? Are these, are these people bloody out of that building? <laughs> what a joke. What are they doing there? Surely, I mean, they're risking their lives. There's a terror suspect around. What a load of garbage. Have a look at it, this guy filming. Let's just go back to the terrorist. Bibo, Dumbo, whatever his name is. There he is running. This guy's got no fear whatsoever. His main concern, he just has to get into that building. As we see him, he gets into another car. You know, like I said, he's got no fear. As quick as he can, the urgency is really there. He needs to get into that building there. As we see the car flying towards the entrance, this guy's got no fear. His only objective is to get into that building. Who gives a damn who's in his way? He doesn't bother about cops. Security... He just manages to get through security at the door, brandishing a rifle. It doesn't bother him. We see him get parked here. And cops not far behind. And he just runs and runs. And he doesn't bother. No one bothers him. He has to get in there. And the cops are not far behind. A few seconds behind, not far behind. Okay. Let's just have a look at this new age superhero. I mean, have a look at him. He looks old, feral, unhealthy, and they're portraying this guy as the superhero who who uh, would have done Dirty Harry, Rambo, Superman, Batman, you name every Marvel superhero proud for what he did. It is an absolute absurd joke, an insult to anyone's intelligence that you can believe the, the story that this guy, everyone, the media spewing regards this guy. Well, I'll tell you the honest truth. Canadians, you've never had a government in your life. You have been ruled by those in Buckingham Palace. This guy here is a, is a representative of those in Bucking, the slime in Buckingham Palace. That's why they are portraying this guy as the hero. So back to this idiot again. He's telling us that our terrorist friend went all the way to the end of the uh, hallway, hid behind the pillar, and then the superhero Vickers, who happened to hear those two pops, uh, who, who happens to have his office right next to the pillar, just happens to grab a gun. He flies out without any fear whatsoever. He does the most <laughs> unbelievable move in, in, in world history. He dives sideways. Kevin Vickers takes his sidearm, dives around the pillar to the ground. While he's in the air, he spins to land on his back, 
firing upwards at Bibo, hitting Bibo as he himself hits the ground. And of course, no blood. Where's the blood? So let's get this straight. This guy ran to that building with a rifle. There would have been security guards there. He went straight past him. Five, ten seconds at the most, the three cops in the car were behind him. They ran in. This guy went all the way to the end of the hallway without those cops shooting at him. Um, the whole hallway were, had no people. We see in the video, there were no people. Uh, it was all evacuated. Did they realise this guy was coming? Why weren't there any other people? Then all of a sudden, as this guy got to the end, he decided to hide behind a pillar. Then not only were the three cops from the car uh, coming, all of a sudden there's about ten other cops with cameras appear from nowhere. Absolutely appear from nowhere. And then the story goes that um, a superhero did his super uh, <laughs> unbelievable feat and, and killed this guy. Then all these other guys joined in the chorus and started firing. So, the big, big, big question I ask everyone is why, after busting his guts to get to this building, run in the building, run to the other end, and get within 20 feet of the entrance of the, the chamber, uh, there was nothing stopping him. Why did he all of a sudden stop and hide behind a pillar and wait for these clowns to come and kill him? I mean, he knew if he just waited there, there's no way you know, he was going to win this fight against all these people. So why didn't he just do his job? He was fearless. He's a terrorist. Why didn't he just run into the chamber? The doors would have been widely opened for him and gone berserk. Uh, I don't know. Does that make sense to anyone? I mean, there's no way no. His objective was to kill the Prime Minister and the politicians, but yet he stopped and waited for these clans to kill him. So that's the big question. If someone can answer that for me, why did this guy just all of a sudden, you know, he was fearless. There was no one there to stop him from going into, that, into those chambers. That parliament just sat. He could have gone into the public gallery as well. But he decided that I'll just stop here. Yeah, I'll just stop in, hide behind a pillar. Shoot me, superhero. I'm just a terrorist. You're a you know, 60 year old geriatric who can fly through the air. And, and while you're flying through the air, you shoot me. God, people, this is just an absolute insult to anyone's intelligence. It's definitely about more fear. Give more bloody um, power to the government. Bring in more security. That's what it's all about. This we knew was going to happen, of course. This is what we've been talking about for a very long time. As you can see here off the CBC, uh, Public Safety Minister Stephen Blaney has got a look of determination and anger on his face. Um, this slimy reptile has just beefed up this CSIS bill, right? The CSIS powers beefed up under new bill tabled by Stephen Blaney. Public Safety Minister says it's time to stop underreacting to the great threats against us. Now, I want to say this to all Canadians out there. 
There is absolutely no threats to you whatsoever except from your fucking government. Okay? These scumbags like this guy, Stephen Blaney, are the threat to you. Okay? You've got to understand this. And this is what I've been showing um, for the last few days, last week or so, showing the false flag events that they carried out here uh, just outside of Montreal. And then, of course, right in Ottawa downtown at the War Memorial and then the Senate or the uh, Parliament. And it's problem reaction solution, folks, because they were going to vote on this bill this week right when this shooting happened. And wouldn't you know it, now everyone's on board. So Public Safety Minister Stephen Blaney has tabled a bill in the House of Commons today to expand the powers of the Canadian Security Intelligence Canada Spy Agency. Bill C-44 dubbed the Protection of Canada from Terrorists. The Protection of Canada from Terrorists. Well, the terrorists that exist in Canada are in the fucking government. Okay? Um, was expected to be introduced last week bef before a gunman launched an attack in the capital. Wouldn't you figure? I mean, it's just how it works, right? We see it all the time. There's always a bill that's ready to go. Um, so the, the proposed legislation... Um, here amends the Canadian Security Intelligence Service Act as well as strengthening Canadian Citizenship Act and making consequential amendment to the Access to Information Act. They're just tearing down the laws that uh, protect us as citizens. Bill C-44, as CBC News reported earlier, amends the Canadian Security Intelligence Act to give greater protection to confidential sources without having to identify them in court proceedings, even to the judge. So you don't even have to, uh, if they get somebody giving them sources about somebody up to something bad, they don't even have to tell the judge who the source is. They could just pull it out of their ass. Then give CSIS more powers of surveillance and detention to more effectively investigate threats to the security of Canada. So more power, more surveillance, the ability to detain people without any warrant, right? The ability to hold people against their will, against their legal rights. Then, of course, give Canada spy agency explicit authority to operate within or without uh, outside Canada. This would allow the agency to share information on suspected Canadian tourists, or terrorists, sorry, abroad with members of the so-called Five Eyes group of country that I always go on about, the US, the UK, Australia, New Zealand. This is exactly what's happening right across the Five Eyes and right across the Western world. There are all these governments are tabling the same type of legislation. It's, it's uncanny, the resemblance that these legislations have. Uh, this is something that up north of the 49th was touching on the other night on a big show that we have. I'll post the link for that show on the emergency roundtable discussion that we had dealing with this. Um, it is beyond or Orwellian where we are going as a state, Canada. And the criminals that created this farce are the ones that are going to benefit from the rights that they're going to destroy from the powers that they're going to gain, right? These scumbags are evil beyond belief, Canada, and you cannot let them do this to you while it's already being done. More anti-terrorism anti measures coming. Today's proposed legislation has not been uh, altered following Wednesday's assault. Of course, because it was already all there in advance. On the National War Memorial in Canada's center block, CBC has learned. CBC, you know, good for nothing. Um... Canadian Bullshit Corporation. The ultimate goal of the bill is to give authorities greater power to deal with some of the Canadians already on watch list who are considered most dangerous. I'm probably on that list. Fuck. You know, it, it really is more about coming after people that are a threat to the government. And people that are a threat to the government are people that expose the government, folks. That's how it works. You expose what they're up to. You expose their dirty little false flags, their massive psyops, their incredibly criminal um, actions against the people of Canada. They are the ones that are terrorizing Canadians, not some fucking two-bit uh, junkies from Quebec, you know, who've managed to somehow leave a homeless shelter and get across the entire country and end up in the nation's capital with a gun. I don't know how that works. I don't know. <laughs> Funny how that works, eh? 
Blaney told the House of Commons Monday that it is important for new public safety legislation to be an overreaction to the events such as the attacks on Ottawa and Quebec this week, but is equally important for the Canadian government not to underreact to threats. Okay, so he said it's not an overreaction and that we can't underreact. Right? So essentially they want to overreaction. It's an overreaction. It really is because, well, it's problem, reaction, solution. Right? They have set up the problems, of course, the two uh, false flags that they committed this week, and then they have the solution. They say, well, look, we're here. We've, we've worked. It's just a coincidence, of course, that we've been working on this, that it applies directly to the false flags that we just carried out and that we've convinced most of the House of Parliament um, they were under grave threat. The first responsibility of the government is to keep Canadians safe. Really? I think the first responsibility of this government is to keep themselves safe and in power. <laughs> we will not overreact, but it's time to stop underreacting to the great threats against us, Blaney said during the question period on Monday. In addition to today's bills, ceases, uh, today's ceases bills, Blaney said the federal government will also introduce further anti-terrorism measures, further reforms to protect Canadians from terrorism, because we all know those terrorists, they're just coming over the border, they're just, you can't stop them, will be presented in a second forthcoming piece of legislation, Blaney said. It's done, Canada. You're losing your rights. It's, you know, anybody who's going to stand up to the government is just going to be locked up or taken out or whatever, right? Framed or blackmailed or all kinds of nastiness. This opens Pandora's box here, folks. These assholes have changed this country now. We're going to have to fight to get our rights back because they're going to be able to spy on everyone. And you Canadians that don't pay attention, maybe you should think back to about three years ago when Vic Tays, the minister there of safety, I think at the time, said, you know what? You're either with us or you're with the child pornographers. Do you remember that? Vic Tays, who was having an affair with some 18-year-old girl, and he's a 65-year-old, 67-year-old, I don't know how old he is, old geezer. Right? And he said, you're either with us or you're with the child pornographers. And that was giving the right for CSIS or the police, the RCMP, to go into compu people's computers and spy on people without a warrant, essentially. This is what this government is doing to Canada, folks. You know, you're all sipping your Tim Hortons and watching your hockey, but you're not paying attention to what they're doing. I wonder what the comments here are. Okay, Enzo Ferrari. Okay, we have three new bills this in one week. Bill uh, C-13, anyone can get spied on without a warrant. That's the cyberbullying bill, of course. Uh, bill C-44, anyone can get charged on fake evidence. And Bill C-60, no one will hear about it because the PM appoints the CBC executive. Welcome to democracy. Well, thank God we've got people like Enzo here. You are on the ball and here's another one. Your humble narrator uh, it makes you wonder you know, who you should be more afraid of, the terrorists or the Harper government, um, who never miss an opportunity to infringe on Canadian civil rights. I, I can tell you, hands down, 100%, without any fucking doubt, it's the Harper government that you should be way more afraid of. All right? Let's see this one here. By all means, let's overreact to events taken in Canada. A couple of strung-out dudes get in the news and let's su shut down the entire country. I won't be su uh, I wouldn't support this strategy by a reasonable intelligent government let alone this abusive none too bright bunch of incompetence. Uh yeah, you want a better Canada AB215 2015. Um you know what? It's nice to see that uh Canadians are you know starting to wake up. Let's see the top comments here. A lot all this evidence use uh, allow the use of evidence gleaned from confidential sources without having the identity, uh, without having to identify them in court proceedings, even to a judge. Doesn't that provide the license to make up evidence of confidential sources? Hey, you know what? No Kool-Aid. I'm impressed by the Canadians here that are, are seeing what's going on. Imagine how you guys would feel if you knew what I knew, that this whole thing was staged in order to bring in this legislation. Um, but these people, these, these psychopaths, will not stop until they squash anybody's chance to stand up against them. They are beyond evil. This is so awful. The entire government should fall. So what do we see in Ottawa? Well, we see Ottawa strong. 
Ottawa strong everywhere with your handsome underwear model here, the uh, gay victim. Oh, I think he's supposed to be gay, right? And um, it's everywhere now. They are programming you. They've got the t-shirts. They've got the sports teams. They've got the propaganda, right? There you go. Call him. Nathan uh, Cirillo, right? Poor guy. Handsome guy. Every photo, he's wearing army gear, too, just to reinforce that this is a tragedy against the Canadian people. This is a terrible tragedy against the Canadian people. In fact, Canadian people should be absolutely outraged, and they should be demanding the heads of their government and the RCMP on spikes. That's quite simple, right? Because they have pulled off a massive false flag here in Canada to convince you that you need to be watched, that they need more power, that the RCMP needs more power, CSIS needs more power, CSEC needs more power. Do you even know what those things mean, Canada? Right? Do you know about CSIS, the FBI of Canada, and how they want to spy on everyone? They want to have the ability to detain people? They are bringing in an act that um, yeah, even George W. Bush would uh, get giggles looking at, right? Because it's basically the Canadian version of the Patriot Act, right? And this is going to destroy freedom of speech completely. They're already bringing in all these anti-bullying bills, which are really anti-conspiracy theorist bills, because they want you to believe that you should not have the right to bear arms and you should not have the right to question the government and you should not have the right to question any of the false flags that they commit in order to convince you that they need the powers. All right? So what can people do? You can go on Twitter and you can see all the sheeple and also the um, just the shills, right, who are pushing the propaganda and putting the, the pictures everywhere. Already the Ottawa Strong t-shirts are appearing everywhere, folks. They always have the t-shirts ready, you know. Uh, Cassidy Stay, it was two days later she already had the t-shirt. Stay Strong, I even forgot to put that one up before. But they are going to program you folks, um, and they are going to take away your rights. And this is a government that is beyond criminal. This is a government that has committed one of the greatest acts of treason against the Canadian people in the history of Canada, quite possibly the greatest act of treason against the Canadian people that has ever been committed. And they are convinced that they will get away with it, folks. And they are convincing many people out there, like this Spark Street um, Right, that uh, hey, have the t shirts, those are nice t shirts, they're really well done, they're already up for sale already. Just a couple days later, they're all over the place, folks. And people, the sheeple, will buy them and they will push them everywhere. So, what can we do, folks? Um, it's, it's pretty tough, but I'll say this what you can do is kind of do what um, <laughs> I've been doing. This would be a big help to me. If you could go, don't go after the politicians and stuff. Go after the, the people with the small Twitters, you know, under a thousand stuff, right? Go after the people that are being fooled, right? Like I've done here, uh, Patricia Petit here, whatever. Could you change the hashtag to Ottawa False Flag or Wake Up Canada? Ottawa's a false flag, Ottawa Week, right? Here, celebrate the destruction of your own country. Search. The, the, the hashtags for Ottawa Strong and contact these people here like this. This is a perfect person to, to contact. Only a few hundred followers. They don't know what's going on. They are being fooled. And what you can do is use the hashtag Wake Up Canada or Ottawa Week, right? And let these people know that they are being lied to. Post links to our videos, post links to my videos, uh, Auto Expositor, up north of the 49th, you know, all these videos, uh, PK22, Red Pill Revolution, uh, Red Silver J. Let these people know. Just keep searching this hashtag over and over again, Ottawa Strong. And anyone who doesn't look like a government shill, send them our work, send them our videos. Reach these people. This is what, this is the only way we're going to reach these people. Don't go for the people, don't go for the uh, things like this that are obviously on board sort of thing. Stay away from them, but go for the little people. Go for the people that, um, you know, that are being fooled. Send them links to our videos. Get this out there. 
Hi, this is uh, Josh from Free uh, Radio Revolution. And I just uh, thought I'd ask Canadians today, uh, you know, did, uh, did the shooting work? Uh, did the propaganda work? Are you ready to uh, relinquish your, your freedoms and your liberties for more safety and security? Are you, are you mad? Are you ready to bomb ISIS? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just curious. Is, 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 is everything that the, the mainstream media, the CBS and CBC and Fox News and whoever else reported on this, this incident that happened that's extremely unfortunate, but it happened, you know, and uh, it's, it's being twisted now to make us feel like that's it, it's over, you know, let's just give our government all the power they ever wanted and let's, let's go bomb ISIS right now. Uh, that's kind of the mentality that I, I, I'm getting from everyone that's uh, just, you know, your typical everyday Canadian. And uh, I just, I thought I'd make this video and hopefully just, you know, to wake you up out of your trance, to just ask you, you know, did it work? Does, does the propaganda work? Like, are you... Are you truly ready to uh, just roll over and just say, yep, that's it, I'm done, whatever they want, they can have, and, uh, you know, the government's here for our best concerns, and, and uh, nothing really matters anymore. Um, that's not how I'm going to deal with the situation, I tell you that. I'm uh, going to tell everyone that I know, my, my loved ones, my, my, my family, my friends, uh, everyone, that basically that this is just classic problem, reaction, solution. And if you can't see that for what it is, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I can't tell you to open up your eyes anymore. It's just, it, it, it makes me almost sick to my stomach that, uh, you know, Canadians are so brainwashed and, uh, you know, that we're just so far down the rabbit hole of just believing whatever they tell us nowadays. It, it, it's crazy. This is going to be like the Canadian Patriot Act. This is going to be where, <laughs> where they can just spy on you for whatever reason, you know, you, you, you thought 9-11 was an inside job or, you know, you, you feel this way about the month in shooting or you're, you know, you, you want to, uh, you know, get off uh, big uh, business and, and, and big corporate, uh, you know, stranglehold over your life, well, you're, you're an extremist, you're a domestic terrorist and that's how they're going to label you and you might get your, uh, you know, right to uh, not post videos on Facebook taken away or who knows what they'll come up with in the next five, ten years. All I know is we got to do something now because it's getting worse. It's getting scary and it's, it's not just going to, you know, remain this, you know, this, this, this magical way that everyone wants it to remain that, oh, you know, the government's in it for our best interest and that everything's going to be fine and I'm not doing anything wrong so everything's going to be okay. It doesn't work like that. They want to control you through every means possible. So wake up, tell them you're not an idiot, tell them you're ready to stand up and that you won't be fucking controlled.